Now let's talk about the theory of what are called roving and stationary bandits. This theory is an attempt to explain why some forms of autocratic government seem to work much worse than others. The sad truth is that a lot of political leaders are in fact bandits. They try to extract resources from a country rather than to make the country grow. Furthermore, some of these bandits have a very high rate of turnover. For instance, if you look at the history of the nation of Haiti, you find there's a new Haitian president in 1843, there's then another new Haitian president in 1844, yet another new Haitian president in 1845, again in 1846, and then yet again in 1847 we have another new Haitian president. Just think about the incentives if you're one of these Haitian presidents. You've probably figured out that you're not going to be in the presidency for very long, so often the incentive is simply to grab what you can rather than to build up the country and invest in longer-term, more value-enhancing projects. That's an example of the logic of the so-called roving bandit. To understand the contrast embedded in this theory, consider the case of what is called the stationary bandit. Imagine that there's one ruler who knows that he or she will be controlling a given region for 20, 30, 40 years, and that rule is relatively secure with few challengers. Arguably, at least in this theory, the incentive of that ruler is to come closer to maximizing the size of the economic pie, because that ruler will then be around in the longer run to take out additional tax revenue or to benefit from ruling over a wealthier nation. So, under this logic, Autocracies are better when you have a stationary bandit rather than a roving bandit. Furthermore, some of the growth in world history is attributed to the substitution of putting in stationary bandits instead of roving bandits, rather than having gangs running around simply grabbing resources and oppressing people in the countryside. Over time, we had more permanent forms of monarchy and autocracy, and arguably these more per permanent firm forms did in some ways create more economic value. There is some real truth to that story, but that said, I have some reservations about the theory of the stationary bandit. I don't think the stationary bandit necessarily is going to maximize long-term value. If you look at the history of North Korea, it's ruled by Kim from 1948 until his death in 1994. That's almost 50 years. And after his death, it's ruled by his son. And then in 2011, when the son dies, the new leader seems to be his son. You would think that's a fairly enduring form of rule, yet what we find is North Korea is one of the poorest countries on earth. It's an absolute complete tyranny, and there's been very little maximization of long-term economic value. Why might that be? I can think of at least two reasons. The first reason is that people who end up being rulers or dictators, sometimes they're not rational. They're actually just fairly crazy, and you need to be perhaps a bit crazy to have the aspirations and take the risks to become a dictator. The second reason is that if you are a dictator, you don't always want to maximize or increase long-term value, because the wealthier your population becomes, perhaps the greater a chance that you are overthrown. So it could be if you have a long-term perspective and you think you can hang around for a while, then you need to take special care to be oppressive, again, just to make sure you can hang on for the long run. It seems that some stationary bandits can be actually fairly value-maximizing, but a lot of other stationary bandits can be especially bad. To give another example, let's consider British rule over colonial India. You can think of British rule as operating through the East India Company as starting at about the middle of the 18th century and lasting through about the middle of the 19th century, which is when the British government formerly takes over colonial India. And that's a period of about 100 years. But if you look at per capita income over that time span, it's basically falling. And there you have a, a ruler, a private sector ruler, which is supposedly maximizing profit. And what they're doing over the long term is simply not helping India grow very much. The incentives of the East India Company were to levy fairly high rates of taxation and not spend a lot of money producing public goods, and India didn't get a very good growth record out of that, even though arguably the East India Company was a kind of stationary bandit. We'll be discussing this case in greater detail in the India section of this course. 
To sum up, the differences between roving and stationary bandits are very real, but I think this is a topic where economists have not discovered all of the relevant angles. In any case, to read more, well, if you'd like to see a list of the heads of state of Haiti, you can find that on Wikipedia. And the theory of roving versus stationary bandits was developed by Manker Olson, and I would recommend you consult these works, all available online.